our 24 hour freshwater fishing challenge starts now. We are currently in southeastern Florida and this is officially now sunrise. We have the opportunity to catch over 32 invasive fish species which do not belong here but do call home to Florida. We thought about doing a fresh and saltwater but the freshwater fishing in Florida is so vast we figured we'd keep it separate. So if you guys want to see a 24 hour saltwater Florida challenge, get this video up to 10,000 likes and we will make it happen. But for now, we're sticking to freshwater and we're going to see if we can start off on a bang. We got a canal, just so happens right out in our back door. That is teeming with life. We could catch, I believe, the two that we're going to start off with is, of course, largemouth and potentially everyone's favorite, the snakehead. 24 hour challenge. We're going to be up for 24 hours doing nothing but fishing. It's not a bad problem to have. It blows my mind as to how everywhere you look and turn down here in Southeast Florida, there is life. There is water to be fished. I've got two rods. I've got a braid casting rod, and then I got a spinning rod with some heavy leader on it. Oh, what was that, dude? It's always a mystery in Florida, man. You get a bite like that, it's like, I don't even know what it is. I bet it was largemouth. No telling, though. I think that might have just been a little measly largemouth. First bite of the day, though. Took no, took no time at all. And I'm in a tree. That's usually what happens. I lose a fish and I get snagged. Let's see if I get a fish to come back. Oh, oh, oh! No, oh, big snakehead! No big snakehead! Oh my god, that was huge! Oh, did you get that? Oh, f that was a giant snakehead, dude! Holy! F Third cast of the day. Welcome to Florida. Look what he did to my frog. Peeled the paint off and everything. We got such ferocious mouths. How did I miss that fish? That was huge. Oh my God. Snake, snake, dude, snake. Oh my gosh, it's a snake. It's a snake. It's a snake. Gotta get him off. Let's go, baby! Let's go! Let's go! Our first fish in the 24-hour challenge isn't even native to Florida, and it is probably one of the more badass ones. That being a freaking bullseye snakehead. Holy hell, dude. How insane is this creature? This is a true canal river monster. Look what he did to that frog, too. Absolutely choked. These guys are gnarly. They can survive through some of the worst conditions, making them such a easy fish to find in some of the smallest and skinniest waters around here in South Florida. Unlike most fish that dump their babies in bounds, these guys will rear their young for quite some time until they're big enough to go on their own and survive without help. Wow, look at those teeth though. All right, we got Jimmy unhooked. One last look at this guy. Look at him in the grass. Don't be alarmed. These fish can actually survive quite some time out of water. That's what makes them expert survivalists. He's probably a little bit confused as why he's been on land. Watch him release himself too. This is pretty incredible. One thing these snakehead can do is they can actually release themselves. Give him a little head start here. He senses the water, he feels it, he knows where he's at. There he goes. Pretty incredible, man. They're wild fish, very creepy. Seemingly something from the Black Lagoon. I don't know, they're pretty nuts. Our first invasive of the day, and it's probably one of the more epic ones. We have the opportunity, of course, to catch butterfly peacocks, which come all the way from South America. Don't forget too, there are clown knife fish, which are rapidly spreading throughout Florida. So we have possibly the opportunity to catch one of those. They're much harder than peacocks, much harder than snakehead. Very finicky fish, but if we do catch one today, it would be ridiculous. Let's keep trucking though. We've got miles of canal to go and so many different fish species to catch just in this little tiny water system. Another snake. Another snake. Oh, he just came on down. He's right there at the bank. Oh my God, he's right there at the bank. He's right there at the bank. I don't think he, he's right there, isn't he? Or did he go in the water? Damn, he might've gone in the water. Damn. Another snakehead. Little guy, not a big one, but that was sick. Is he right there? I can't tell. Is he just sit, sitting there? Nah, he's in the water now. Damn. That was sick. Little guy, but it was still a snake. It's so dope. There's a giant turtle in the water too. I don't know if you guys can see him. Big turtle in the water. He's like, oh, well, yeah, the snake's, yeah, he's gone. Damn, dude. That was nuts, man. That was nuts. Could have been another snake in. That'd have been a wild freaking start to our day.
That's a snake. Or a large one. I don't I can't tell. I have no idea. Did it just come off? I think it just came off. Nope, oh, still on. Snakehead. No way, dude. Another snake. No freaking way. Look how dark this one is. That's a much bigger one too. Uh, a little bit bigger. Another snake. Let's go, baby. That is so dirty, dude. Second snakehead of the day. Fish number two. It's another snakehead. These bull eye snakehead are so much fun, man. They crush the filthy frog too. Absolutely dump on it. He's got that thing hanging in his mouth. He wants it, man. He he does not want me to take that thing out of his mouth. Another decent one. I can't believe I haven't caught a largemouth yet. I worked this whole canal with the frog and we just had bites from snakehead. That does say something though. And a lot of these ponds where you've got clown knives, peacocks, and snakehead, there's generally no room for competition when it comes to those largemouth. They just cannot compete. But it makes for awesome invasive fishing, just like these guys. Also too, one of the reasons why you might see some of these dots on the snakehead is because it's a defense mechanism when they're younger. It's a false eye. So that way, if a fish does tend to try to take a swipe at one of these guys, they're gonna go for the tail and not, of course, the head, which is very vital to surviving. <laughs> Should I go out in there and get him? That's what they do. That's what they do? Yeah, they just sit there. And eventually, it'll, when he feels calm, he'll swim off. Interesting. Well, that wasn't the most graceful release, but you have to understand these fish literally breathe air. And although it may look like he's stuck, he's not stuck. That's how they get from one pond to another. A little bit of flood comes in, all they need is like a half inch to an inch of water to swim from one canal to the other, one pond to the other, and that's how they thrive. Psycho looking things, man, they're so scary. Come on, baby, just one large mouth would be nice. Oh, 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 that's her. There we go, ooh, decent one, decent one. Is that a largey? Oh yeah, decent little large mouth. New species, let's go. Oh my gosh, come on. On the lunker, nice little fat Florida, largemouth bass on the lunker. He took my lunker, but we did get him anyway. Nice fish. That's two down, snakehead, largemouth, bing bong. See you later. We've checked off two species here. Let's hit the road and chase after something a little bit different. Maybe hit some canals and some roadside ditches for some even crazier and weirder fish species that are lurking in the marshes of Florida. Here we go. Two down, about a hundred more to go. We are on the move. We just finished the canal session. It was pretty good. We were in, by the way, a very urban setting. I think in order to get some more species, we're gonna have to go into the glades, which is much more rural, much more natural. This was great. The snakehead loved this kind of territory. In order to find some of these weird, diverse species that Florida holds, I think we're gonna have to go off the beaten path. We may actually come back here in the evening for some more difficult fish to catch, but for right now, we just need to get some numbers, some diversity, and the only way to do that is to drive an hour west the Everglades. One quick stop though at Walmart to grab some essentials for some of these more finicky fish and I think we should be good to go. So far, 24 hour challenge is starting very nicely. We've made it. Taking a two hour rip down to the Everglades. Pulled up on the side of the road at a spot that I didn't plan on fishing but they're letting out so much water here that there could be a lot of action going on. It's a very public spot, it obviously gets hammered. But whenever I see moving water, I'm gravitated towards it. So we're gonna check it out, take a couple casts here. If it doesn't work, the nice thing is we just drive right along the road and we've got water on either side of us. So this is a very fishy area. We're gonna try to spend at least three hours here, get back in the car, then head back up north to West Palm to get like a couple of fish species that are gonna be kind of challenging to catch. But let's start with something easier and fish the glades and the canals that are adjacent to 41. Escape the suburbs of South Florida. We are in the Everglades. This is where we're gonna be filming the second half of this fishing challenge. There's so much we can encounter today, including some alligators. You hear that? Something just busted back there too. Look at these guys. We're gonna keep our safe distance from them, but there's two little alleys up there. Well, one's not too little, the other one's kind of small. And they're just basking themselves in the sun right along the road. Pretty crazy. Check this out. Oh, we got some current here. Oh, oh, hang on, pause. I already see like tons of fish. There's a gar. I'm seeing a gar. Oh, this could be good. We can knock out some serious species here. I'm just gonna flick my little swim bait right in the current, see if I can get. Oh, dude, there are so many fish. I don't know what they are. Something big right there. Look at them all. I don't know. Oh my God, tilapia. Hundreds of tilapia. Oh, they're chasing it. 
Oh, I got something. Oh, he just ate it. I don't know what that was, but I just got ate by something. Oh my gosh. There is literally hundreds of fish over here. Got him. Oh, he just ate it. No. Got him. <laughs> what did I just catch? Oh, this is some sort of bluegill. We'll have to ID these fish later afterwards. I know that sounds ridiculous, but there's just so much diversity in these canals that I can't think off the top of my head what some of the things we'll catch. This is a species of sunfish that is probably native to Florida. I'm uncertain as to what it is. I'm usually pretty good at IDing my panfish, but this is something I'm not familiar with. Beautiful guy. This is number three on a little tiny Guggen soft plastic. We're gonna gently release him right behind us because I don't wanna spook the rest of the fish that are over here. They're, oh my God, they're eating. There's so many fish over here. Here we go, send them back. I'm just gonna send them right behind these, these trees. We're also gonna have to be very careful today. The closer we come to the bank, the closer we are to the home of the alleys. And the alleys, they like humans, okay? I don't know if they've got a full on taste for them, but they definitely would like my, my meat for sure. I got, I'm like, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Let's get back in there. See if we can get another fish. I got something. I got something. I don't know what this is. Oh my gosh. Something new, not a bluegill. Might be a non-native. Oh, Mayan cichlid. This is one I can definitely ID. That's species number four within just a couple casts. A Mayan cichlid. This is uh, what the peacock bass in here eat. Actually, the peacock bass were stocked in Florida to combat some of these cichlid species that are unwelcomed here in these warmer climates of Florida. Not too many fishers. You can just pull off on the side of the road and make a cast and put your bait in literally hundreds of fish hundreds of fish and not even know what they are too. Settle down, settle down. We're gonna get you back in the water. I'd love to do it. What was that? Look at this. What is it? Oh, oh boy. Oh yeah, Mr. Alligator's coming up to say hello. He's, he's heard the fish and he wants to check out to see what's going on. That right there is exactly one of the reasons why I have to stay a safe distance from the bank because once these gators start hearing us release fish, they're gonna check us out. Matter of fact, here comes one right now. He's just hiding right below the uh, the mangroves and uh, he's waiting for waiting for waiting to be fed probably if i had to guess that are in here there we go instantly threw in there and got bit might be a new species might be one we already have i think it's one of those bluegill yeah it's the same species of bluegill we just caught aggressive little guys send them right back oh there's the alligator. i didn't even see him he's just sitting there just a little guy just chilling oh now he's facing us What's up, friend? What's up, homie? He might be full. Oh, Oscar right there. God. Oh, I just had an Oscar. Just had an Oscar. That'd be such a sick catch to catch an Oscar. Today. I don't think I've actually ever, I've caught maybe a couple, but not many. I've caught very few of those guys. They're super interesting fish, very aggressive in nature. Oh, that's something decent. That's something decent. Another cichlid, I think. No, Oscar. New species. New species, let's go, baby. Is that an Oscar? What is this? It's not a cichlid. Oh yeah, that's an Oscar. Let's go, man. These guys are super aggressive, and I believe they they got into these waters through you know pet stores and people buying them and not knowing what to do with them right before a hurricane. So they just dump them into natural ecosystems like the Everglade. Just in this hole, we've caught three different species of freshwater fish. An Oscar, dude. They're really interesting. They look very similar to like a cichlid, but I don't believe they're in the same family. They're equally as aggressive and they're fun to catch, man. They fight really hard. They don't get too, too big, but they're so much fun to catch. Wow, unreal, dude, unfreaking real Gonna get him unhooked and send him on his way. There she goes, get down the little Oscar. So dope, man. Oh, what is this? I think that's a jaguar. No, 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 this is, a, this is a native fish, I'm pretty sure. Maybe not, I don't know. New species, I don't know what it is. Once we get in the car and I look at uh, this little PDF I downloaded before going on this mission, I'll be able to tell you what some of these guys are. That is something new though. Very dark, very different looking fish too. Equally as cool though. Like just when you think you've caught everything that you could out of here, as far as species goes, something weird like this pops up. Look how dark, look at his face too. He's got some nasty teeth on him. This is so much fun, man. This is why we came to Florida, for the diversity and just for the sheer fact that there's water and endless fishing opportunities everywhere. Look how his mouth extends too. He's trying to bite you, dude. Let him give you a little nibble. He's hungry. <laughs> Just locks down on you. <laughs> See you, bud. That guy crushed. I watched him like fully eat it. That might be a jaguar right now. Oh, I thought that was another. Another one of those weird cichlids. 
This one's a little bit wider. Yeah, I think you're right, Caleb. I think that is a Jaguar. Can you lip them? Yeah. No. No. Not gonna lip them. He's got teeth, bro. I would say this is a wild success. All we had to do is park on the side of the road, take five steps into a mecca of wildlife. Gators, fish, non-natives, natives, absolutely money. And all we had to do was throw like a little tiny Guggen panfish saw plastic and we, we annihilate them. Absolutely not of them. The cool thing is, is the road runs right along the canal. So we're just gonna keep on driving down until we find some more water. The only downside of this is there's only specific spots and openings where you, you can kind of make some cast. It's very overgrown, but it's one of the reasons why they're such good fishing here is because these fish have a lot of places to hide and they're not getting messed with. These guys in the open though, definitely getting messed with by us today. Let's keep trucking though. crazy how each drain has got different species held up in it. Sometimes it's bass, sometimes it's cichlid, other times it's just straight up gar. I'm trying to slow things down right now. We're about to head on out of here because we are running out of daylight and try some different stuff back at West Palm, but I wanted to really get finessey. I doubt too many people do this, and probably for good reason, but I'm throwing a really tiny plastic, soft plastic Guggen swim bait, panfish swim bait in the shallows. And I'm trying to get one of these weird bass we keep seeing. I think it's a Choctaw bass, which I've never caught before. So this would be a double hit. Oh wow, they're right there. Just stay crouched, maybe they won't see us. I'm just gonna try to remain low key. They're everywhere too. There's largemouth mixed in, but there's also these weird Choctaw bass. For whatever reason, the largemouth in here are extremely timid. Like, oh, okay, something just bit me. Hang on, what do we have here? Oh my God, oh my God, what is this, what is this? Oh, it's a regular largemouth, damn. First largemouth today, it took this long just to get a largemouth in the spot. We're looking for something about this size, but it is not a, a species of bass I've ever caught before. There's not too many, but I'm seeing them here and there. They just don't look like LMBs. They look like some weird species. There's some big bass in here too. We saw a couple that are, you know, three and four pounders, which is incredible to think in an ecosystem like this where the water's skinny and it's tight corners. This is what we're using. If you guys wanna pick some of these out, check the link down below. It's basically a smaller version of the saucy swimmer, but in panfish form, and I'm just drop shotting it. It's clear water, so a drop shot really does make sense. You know, it's it's a little stained, but for the most part, it's clean, and uh, the fish are extra spooky over here. Why don't they just eat it, dude? These bass are so finicky. Oh, just I just got throttled. Is this different bass or a largemouth? That's a largemouth. Damn, big alligator and largemouth, and and BMWs. Gosh, dude, they're going crazy over here. Is this it? This is it. What is this? This is not a largemouth. This is not a largemouth, is it? Is it a largemouth? It's, large it's a largemouth. No, 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 no. Hmm? Look at his lateral line, he looks so different. He's just a pale largemouth. Oh, uh, drop a comment. This, this is for largemouth, isn't it? I'm just so excited to catch one of these weird bass that I'm not sure. It looks a little different, but it probably is largemouth. You're right. On that micro gang, that micro gang right now, there's tons of bass, there's alligators. One thing we've noticed that if we find a spot in the canal where there are gators, the fish around adjacent to the gators are much more comfortable. I don't know what that is. If you guys know why, drop a comment. That's him, that's him, that's him, is that him? I got him, I got him, I got him. This is not a large mouth. This is not a large mouth bass. Oh my gosh, we did it. We did it. We did it boys, that's not a large mouth. It's not, is it? I don't think it's a large, I think it's a Choctaw bass. I could be completely wrong. It does not look anything like a largemouth to me. Oh my God, maybe it is a largemouth. Drop a comment, you guys let me know. For now, we're not gonna count it. It just looks so different. Oh, um, I might be tripping. Damn, dude, I thought that was him. Ah! I suck at ID. All right, I'm gonna try a little secret tip for Gar. One way to catch these guys. Um, without a hook is actually to use some sort of form of cloth or yarn. We went to Publix today and grabbed like a mop head and we're gonna use this, hopefully, to tangle up a gar. Their teeth are like really, I don't know, their teeth are very coarse and when they get their mouths wrapped around some fabric, they just can't like let go, like it won't allow them to let go. So I'm gonna take my popper and on the tail end of the hook, I'm gonna wrap it in some of this fiber that we got at Publix. This may or may not work, but it's a good shot at getting these guys to stay pinned. That's one of the hardest things about gar is having them stay on the hook. So we're gonna try this spot real quick for, for a gar. We did catch a couple bass. I thought they were the, 
the Choctaw bass or whatever bass that I keep thinking I'm seeing, but I think they were just some colored up largemouth. As dumb as this looks, this might actually get us another species for today. Got him, got him, let's go baby. We got a gar, oh my gosh, I cannot believe we did it. I cannot believe we just did that. Oh my gosh, there we have it. We got ourselves a freaking glizzy gar. I think this is a Florida spotted, I'm not really sure. These fish are nuts though, they got crazy teeth and we've actually caught these guys before on other 24 hour challenges when we've been in Texas. This I believe is something completely different though. I know the hold I have is a bit aggressive, but they are hardy fish. They've actually got armor for scales and teeth like alligators. Oh, speaking of, here comes Allie the Gator. Let's come and check out, see if we wanna donate our meal. Such a cool fish, we finally got him. He's gone. <laughs> Sorry. He's so freaking hard to handle. Well, we didn't get a good glimpse at it, but we'll pop up a picture somewhere like right here of a gar that I'm holding. I believe that was a different species. I don't think I've ever caught that species of gar before. Really unique. Look at Mr. Allie. He's checking us out. He's wondering what all the ruckus is. Go back in your hole, buddy. I got nothing for you. Trying to make it look bigger. Yeah, he's trying to make it look bigger. Oh yeah, dude. Whatever, man. We'll see you later. We're going back up north. Gator bites for dinner. Gator bites for dinner. In your honor, buddy. In your honor. All right, let's head. Let's head back on the road and keep fishing. Hello, friends. New spot. New ducks. Who this? We're at a little canal. Sad to say this, but we're out of the glades now. We're fishing some more urban stuff. As you can see, we got townhomes, mansions, all throughout this little canal. I've never fished it before. Get kind of a nasty storm rolling in right now. Hopefully we can make the most of it. We got about an hour and a half to catch that peacock. Peacock, we're, we're like just adjacent Miami. This should not be that hard, but like I said, man, I usually make things that are super easy, very difficult. Ice cream? And ducks. And ducks, ice cream, Thank ducks, and, and hopefully peacocks. That's insane. Ah, f something is fing me up right now. Ah, f fing sh I think I just got stung. God fing damn it, son of a bitch. That hurts. Did we both get stung in the feet today? I haven't got stung in a while. I forgot how much that hurts. Oh, yeah. Feels Ooh, on the fleshy part. Oh, 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 peacock, 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 right there. I should have followed me up. Peacock, right there. He just followed me up. Peacock. I'm gonna have to switch to a jig. There's one. There's one. Got him. He's in the grass. No, 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 no. Get out of the grass. I still have him. Oh, not what we wanted. Damn it. Well, we're seeing peacocks, but of course I get bit by none other than the not so elusive mind cycle. Dang, dude, I thought that was him. He wasn't fighting like a pea. I was like, eh, I'm not so sure. Well, we'll take him. One that we've already got on the list though. Thanks, bud. Come on, man. There's one. Oh, what is this? Oh, no way, new species, baby. This right here is a copper-nosed bluegill. They're native to Texas. What I meant to say is they're native to Florida. I'm still in that Texas mood. Such an interesting fish, an unexpected catch here at this next stop. Freaking bluegill, they're super dark and they've got these really awesome vertical lines. They get their name because they've got a little copper spot right above their eyeballs. Cool. Nice little bycatch while peacock bass fishing. And best part is species. Let's go. That might be a pea or a large mouth. What is that? That's her. Let's go, dude. We got it. We got the pea. Oh my gosh. Not a very big one, but it still counts. It's one of my favorite fish to catch in Florida, at least as far as freshwater goes. A little tiny peacock. Just pick some, actually, this is Caleb's doing. We picked some random spot off the side of the road. And there's peas in here. Decent little guys, too. We had a couple big ones come up and chase us, but of course, a little when I land. But of course, the one I land has to be an itty bitty baby pea. Such an awesome fish. Oh, that feels so good, dude. 
They can be difficult fish sometimes to catch an artificial. Of course, when they're spawning, they're very vulnerable like largemouth are, but when they're not in the spawn mode and they're in this really clean, pressured urban waters, they can be a little bit of a challenge. So it feels really good to take that one off the list. I think I'll have to do a tally. Maybe we'll do it in post editing. But I think we're getting close to 10 species so far. It's looking really good. We got two species out of this little ditch, but we're not done yet. A little over 10 hours into our 24 hour Florida fishing challenge. Stop off at Publix. Caleb's put me on a pub sub right now. I've never had a pub sub. Drop a comment if you've ever had one. Uh, he swears by them. He loves them. He actually made it a point to find a spot right across from a Publix. There's not, in my opinion, too many fish we can chase as far as freshwater goes here in Florida at night. We're still gonna make it happen. Maybe we find some carp spots. There's also tons of like little weird stuff lurking in these canals and maybe they'll they'll come to life. One thing is for sure, and that is that even though I'm not super familiar with fishing at night here in Florida, I do know for a fact that nature comes alive. We're gonna drive another two hours back from Miami to West Palm and see if we can get into some trouble, get that 10th species because that would be a huge accomplishment for this challenge. Ooh, dude. That was one right there. He's spooked. How are the vibes? Vibes not looking so good. We've just walked the canal with some bread and corn and some small lures. Nothing to show for it. Vibes are off. Seen lots of snakehead though. I don't know if a snakehead wants to eat my corn. You playing ass nicely. I don't know, man. We're still gonna have to keep grinding. Struck out on the canal and the pond. Nothing through lures through. Corn and bread. I don't have corn breads that they could be throwing right now. But we don't have shiners, so that's what I'm throwing. And we got nothing to show for it. Bummer. Good morning. We fished a good chunk of the night. Had to cut our losses. Went in. Grabbed a change of clothes. Took a little bit of a nap. This is it, the final hour of our 24 hour challenge. Man, did not go good. We had a cold front roll and it seems like every time we, we film one of these challenges, it goes good up until the point it doesn't. And when it doesn't go good, it's like right now, like at night. It gets cold, it gets rainy. We didn't get rain, but it did get cold. It's 50 something degrees. For South Florida, it's pretty chilly. So we're posted up on our last spot today. We're gonna see if we can catch one of these guys right here. Calm knife fish. They're native to Thailand and Indochina, in tropical regions, and somehow they got here to Florida. Yeah, dude, Florida's a melting pot for crazy fish. And uh, we're gonna see if we can catch one of these guys. They're pretty difficult to catch on artificial, but we're gonna try. Wish us luck, let's end on a bang. No way. Oh, nice one, dude. Oh, nice one. Careful, don't lose him, don't lose him, don't lose him. Don't lose him. Oh, dude, that's a good one. Nice, dude. That's a good one <laughs> i'm like what's he got over there oh he's got a little crazy back nice bowfin dude hell yeah let's go hell yeah. first bowfin <laughs> that was him see that things are about to end it's 7 a.m we're not giving up we're just peppering this point, watching these fish come up and, and grab air. I've gotten a couple of little tiny taps, but nothing solid, solid enough to really connect. We're gonna keep fishing though. I'm dedicated at this point. I'm committed to making this happen. What a vibe. Oh. Adam. Was not ready for that. It is now 8.40. We've actually gone over the 24-hour mark. That's how hard we've been going. I couldn't seal the deal. I choked on the clowns, had maybe a couple little taps, and we tried to make something out of nothing, switch our gears over to Snakehead, and I lost the only bite that I had today. Regardless, we went hard. Definitely not for lack of effort. And we caught some really good fish. I believe Caleb was doing a recount on the species. He thinks that we have 10. I thought we had nine. We'll have to go and review the footage. But let's just say we got close to 10 if not right at 10. There was pretty overwhelming when we got to the canal spot earlier 
yesterday. Wow, everything's kind of a blur right now, but yesterday we got close to 10. This video hopefully is a perfect example as to why this state is such an awesome fisher. Yes, there's some species that don't belong here, but they're fun to catch and you can take advantage of them. Like cloud knife, like snakehead, like peacocks and these crazy cichlid that lurk all throughout the ponds and canals that are littered throughout Florida. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching this video. Like I said, 10,000 likes, and we will do a saltwater version of this, 24-hour Florida saltwater version, which in my opinion is probably gonna be way more hectic than this video. But I just wanna say I appreciate all y'all for watching this episode. Be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and drop a comment. Let us know where we should film our next 24-hour challenge. We're peacing out, signing out. We're gonna go get some sleep, catch some Z's, and get ready for our next fishing mission. As always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop.